Okay, today's talk is about uh, clinical. I mean, as usual, my emphasis is on clinical approach because the rest you can always read from the book. Clinical approach to speech and language dysfunction. And uh, last time, if you remember, I had told, please go back and see what is the difference between speech and language. I hope some of you have. See, you know, we have Sorry. So, the important point in clinical neurology is that all our activities of daily living are controlled by the nervous system. And that is where the beauty of clinical neurology and the amazing interest in clinical neurology. So whether a person is conscious or unconscious, talking relevantly or irrelevantly, walking normally or gait disturbance, unable to write, unable to lift the hand, any of these daily activities are part of the neurological examination. And that is the interest of neurology. So today, one more such activities of daily living, that is the speech and language. What is the difference between the two? Speech is defined as the expression or the ability to express thoughts and feelings by articulate sounds. That means by talking. So speech is only concerned with talking. Whereas language is a method of communication. So there is a difference between talking and communication of the feeling either spoken or written consisting of words in a structured and conventional way and language includes body language you can see the body language here how one can express one's affection so the basic difference between speech and language is speech is only talking expressing the feelings or whatever things are there whereas language is a, a total communication by writing by talking and also if somebody is talking you should be able to listen and understand if somebody has written something you should be able to read and understand in addition to that bodily language is also part of the language so that is the difference between the speech and language i hope you will understand this perfectly before we proceed further <coughs> What is more important is the evolution of a human being. We are bestowed with the ability to speak and also have a language center. This is what distinguishes a man from the rest of the animals. So let us make use of it properly. Akshay. Now language is a very complex process. Language is a very complex process. So there are some specialized centers. The most important thing to realize is that the language is the centers or the network is in the left hemisphere, left cerebral hemisphere in the perisylvian region. Now we have important areas. One is called as a Broca's area. You can see that it is a Broca's area which is in the inferior frontal gyrus. This is also called as a motor speech area. So this is concerned with our expression by talking. Then we have Wernicke's area, which is here the Wernicke's area. You can see here this part of it, Wernicke's area, which is a sensory speech area. That means it receives messages, both in terms of writing and listening. And motor speech area is in terms of expression by talking and by writing also. Then there is an angular gyrus here, which is a posterior parietal lobe. This is concerned with memory retrieval and language processing. So they are all called as association areas. Then we have a supramarginal gyrus. This again, which identifies the postures and gestures, bodily language. So the bodily language here will be in the supramarginal gyrus. 
but don't mistake they are all in isolation they are all very much interconnected with each other now you see this this is called as a dti that is a diffusion tensor imaging which shows the white matter or the connections here you can see the plenty of network connections so actually if you see the language area is not a center language area is a network network consisting of the motor speech area the sensory speech area and what is called as the association areas and all of them are interconnected through what is called as a uh, arcuate through arcuate fasciculus you see they are all interconnected so this is the broca's area and this is the wernicke's area wernicke's area receives the messages and then it transmits to the broca's area for necessary action for example if somebody is talking to you the wernicke's area receives the message that is a sensation to receive the message and you want to reply so then it is conveyed through the association area to the broca's area so that the motor speech the answer can come so this is the question asked by your examiner in the viva voce and this is the answer you are going to give so this is what is the richly interconnected between the motor and sensory now let us take examples of our daily activities most of you are very young and you are in the process of loving somebody or getting married to somebody so how do you communicate your love so you communicate either by talking saying that i love you or by writing like this then how does the your girlfriend receive the response by listening to you when you are talking i love you she listens to you and she reads a note which you have sent it and replies saying that i love you too now you see this this whole thing is a communication that is called as the language this is the motor part of the communication talking is a motor activity writing is a motor activity this is from the broca's area and what is written the what is written the patient is able the sorry your girlfriend is able to read so that is a sensory speech area and able to listen is again sensory speech area so this is our daily activities every day we are doing this every day we are doing so we have a motor activity going on we have sensory feedback coming in so now with this introduction you know that the language has a motor center for talking and writing of course you need motor activity to write motor activity to talk and then listening and reading that is the broca's area now what is happening language is a like a manufacturing unit so somebody tells you that i would like you to come to my house for a dinner you have listened to it now you would like to talk back saying that okay i will come tonight that motor activity is an output so the broca's the wernicke's area has heard the broca's area is the motor unit and then it will send messages to the motor cortex the precentral motor cortex here so that the person can now talk and convey the information so this is a manufacturing unit the language and then after the manufacturing the message which the person wants to he has to now deliver the goods whatever is manufactured it is manufactured in my mind that okay i will accept your invitation then i'll have to talk and tell them so to tell that they have to deliver the goods now how do we deliver the goods by talking now this requires a cooperation and activity of several muscles to start with we need diaphragm because we cannot talk as we are inhaling we can talk as we are exhaling the air as i am talking <laughs> i cannot talk as i am inhaling so i have to take a deep breath to have a long sentence or to have a long musical note so you can see that when you are breathless for example you are running four floors to attend my class on wednesday at sagar hospital 
So as soon as you enter the class, you will not be able to talk because you're already breathless. There is not enough air for you to bring it out the vocal cord coordination. So the important point is a diaphragm. Then as we are exhaling, the air passes through the vocal cord. So we need a vocal cord. Then the vibrations of the pharyngeal muscles, laryngeal muscles, the palate are all required for giving the timber to the voice. Some have got a very important uh, voice which you can easily identify usually the singers. And then we need a facial muscles, especially the lips. Because when you are talking about alphabet, pa, pa, ba, ba, ma, it requires the lip movement together. So the facial muscles, and not to forget, and the most important muscle for talking is the tongue. That's why we always tell, that means if somebody is incessantly talking, so we say that if somebody is not answering your question, I believe in the olden days when somebody has witnessed some crime to prevent him to give a witness as a witness to the crime, they used to cut the tongue so that he will not be able to talk at all. So let me once again tell to deliver the goods, that means to deliver your thoughts to another person. You need to have a motor activity starting from diaphragm, vocal cord, pharyngeal, laryngeal muscles, palate, facial, and tongue. When any of these structures are involved, it is called as dysarthria or dysphonia. So, language disorder is called as a dysphasia or aphasia, whereas the articulation disorder is called as a dysarthria, articulation. Or vocal cord is called as a dysphonia. Vocal cord is a phonation, dysphonia. So when do all these muscles get affected? That means what are all the causes of dysarthria? Now it is the same thing as what we discussed earlier, patient with paraparesis, motor weakness. Patient has got paraparesis, is it the lower motor neuron, upper motor neuron, neuromuscular junction, or is it a muscle? Same thing applies here. So aphasia or dysphasia is a language network disease. Articulation disorder is, it can be upper motor neuron, it can be lower motor neuron, it can be neuromuscular junction, it can be a muscle disease. So patients with spastic dysarthria, motor neuron disease, they have dysarthria. Patients with uh, tongue paralysis, 12th cranial nerve, they have dysarthria. Patient with myasthenia, they have intermittent difficulty in talking. Myopathy, they have got again facio oral myopathies, they also have difficulty. In addition, the muscles are all working, but the coordination may not be there. Like the patient has all upper motor neuron, lower motor neuron, muscle, everything is fine, but he still has a gait disorder because of cerebellar. So, again, cerebellum and extra pyramidal, they chip in for proper uh, uh, delivery of the goods, that is about the talking. So that's why you find dysarthria in variety of neurological conditions. In vocal cords, it is called as dysphonia and aphonia due to vocal cord palsy. As a neurologist, we are interested in what is called as an extra pyramidal disorder, what is called as an adductor dysphonia, where the vocal cords adduct and the person gives a screeching sound as he does. So that means intermittently when this is happening, it is a clinical diagnosis that it is an adductor dysphonia. Neurology is mostly clinical. And neurology is so easy if you understand the basic principles. In abductor dysphonia, where the vocal cords abduct, so obviously when the vocal cords abduct, the voice doesn't come at all, it's a hoarse voice. Voice doesn't come at all. So when a person says intermittently, a teacher is talking to the students giving a lesson, and says, takes rest a couple of minutes, again back to normal. So you may think it is a functional, but actually it is a adductor dysphonia. That means the vocal cords get adducted and then the 
uh, air through passes through a very narrow opening so abductor is where the voice trails off so i hope you now understand the speech is different language is total communication in the form of two motor activities writing and talking in the form of receiving what has been talk sensory reading what has been written again sensory then this language is a uh, station where everything has been produced that means what i should talk what i should write and then through the motor activities the person can either talk or write and this motor activity requires all these muscles functioning normally coordinating normally not to forget once in a way you get a vocal cord palsy and rarely you get adductor and abductor dysphonia now where is this language located as we all know it is in the left hemisphere what we call as a dominant hemisphere and it is a left hemisphere in 90% of right handers and even in 60% of left handers the left hemisphere is the dominant one the others are all ambidextrous that means they write with the uh, right hand they eat with left hand they bowl with cricket with left hand and they they are they are to slap somebody they have more strength in the left than right so they are called as ambidextrous now we we'll go back to the anatomical localization of these uh, centers so the entire language area is in the this is the sylvian fissure and this is the central sulcus right you cannot uh, increase the size are you able to see properly can you see chat ellad no okay so now you see this is the important thing to know is this is called as a primary auditory area and this is the wernicke's area this is the sylvian fissure and this is the central sulcus this is the broca's area now what is important is there are called as primary areas and then association areas primary area is primarily connected to receive the impulses auditory visual the association association areas like for example the supra marginal angular gyrus when you are saying that this is an elephant now how do you know that this is elephant you have seen something you have been told you have been trained to say look this is elephant so when you see the elephant the association area with the past training identify this as elephant if you have never seen an elephant if you don't know what elephant is you can only see a huge black thing there then you ask what is this this is a huge black thing that is a primary area next to that is a association area which we tells that this is elephant so please remember there are primary areas like this is a primary auditory area and then there is a wernicke's area then the, we will come to the occipital area primary and then these are the association areas so similarly we have pre central motor cortex and then again another strip there so broca's area is in the inferior frontal gyrus wernicke is in the posterior superior angular gyrus is for memory retrieval and as i already told you there is a huge network which can be seen by an mr scan now let us see the day to day activities so somebody is talking to you now what happens when somebody is talking to us the sound goes through the ear through the 
inner uh, cochlea and then through the auditory nerve it is a vestibular cochlear nerve and then it goes to the brain stem and then it goes to the primary auditory cortex that is the superior temporal gyrus so the job of the primary auditory cortex is to register the sounds now whether this sound belongs to north indian music south indian music your wife's voice or your girlfriend's voice that is done by the auditory association cortex i hope you have understood this and then it goes to the wernicke's area that is the left superior temporal gyrus which decodes the everything decodes the whole uh, process of listening and analyzing it both the wernicke's area as well as angular gyrus so this is what the auditory system has analyzed and understood now if the reply has to come it will go to the from wernicke's area it goes to the motor associate cortex that is the broca's area from there to the muscles of the uh, articulation so this is how the process of listening and then the talking comes now that is why please remember whenever a child has not started uttering amma appa or any words we say that a child one year to walk two years to talk that is how easy to remember the milestones so two years there must one and a half years itself some children they start talking and when you tell something they repeat by two years two and a half years even at two and a half three years if the child is not talking it is because the child may be deaf that's why all those who are born deaf they are also mute because when the auditory cortex has not received any signals and when the auditory cortex has not decoding that what is that signal then it comes to the broca's area and to the frontal pre front pre central frontal cortex for the person to talk speech so in a patient who doesn't have the <coughs> hearing at all so where is the question of wernicke's area going to the motor area so you understand that why people who are deaf born deaf are also born mute that's why it is extremely important by the age of 2 years if the child is not speaking some words immediately contact the ent person to make sure that the hearing is proper then only the people they may be able to talk so to talk you need to hear now that is about the talking part of it now what about the seeing part of it the vision part of it so the eyes the eyes will look at the image and then you know the optic pathway the optic radiation and it goes to the occipital cortex so the primary visual cortex is called as area 17 now what is the job of primary cortex to identify something which is there in front now what is that in front has to be done by the visual association cortex which is adjacent to the area 17 in the occipital lobe itself further processing occurs in the angular gyrus so all this information the wernicke's will receive and then whatever is seen and processed and identified what is seen if any action needs to be taken then it is conveyed to the broca's area and to the motor cortex suppose in the vision you are seeing a question in your examination a question is written there you see you see a question that is the primary visual cortex then the visual association cortex understands what is the question regarding and then it goes to the motor cortex now you have to write the answer so from there it comes to the writing part from the pre central frontal cortex if it is for reading suppose they say read this paragraph then the reading the articulation part of the speech will come so this is how the vision helps in reading helps in writing from the primary visual cortex to the association visual cortex so i hope you have understood the primary and the association so the primary cortex is a basic information association cortex it associates with the past inputs and gives meaning to what you are listening or what you are seeing example 
the it is important to note differentiate between hearing and listening most in the families the wife is talking something the husband is only hearing he is not listening he is not listening what she is talking some sound is coming you just hearing because he is not using his association auditory cortex whereas the same person if he is with his close friend or his girlfriend he is keenly listening to what words are being spoken so remember the difference between hearing and listening speech and language hearing and listening so similarly this sort of a band which is going on with lot of noise going on so a person like me when i go there i'll be just hearing the loud music but if i go to a concert classical veena i will be intently listening so whether you want to hear or listen it depends on the person so there is a difference between hearing and listening similarly there is a difference between seeing and looking when you go to a government office sir please look into my file sir you have not yet sanctioned the leave so looking means with information there is an association cortex seeing is just primary you may just you may just see the file but you may not understand because you have not paid him anything to make him understand to look into the file so again the primary cortex is the basic information association cortex associates with past inputs and gives meaning to the act so for example here these children are playing there is a sunset they have seen the sunset but they are not interested to look at it whereas this man is looking at the sunset and enjoying the scenery so understand seeing and <clears throat> looking is different so maybe in the next session i will start about the clinical approach as we are running out of time another 2 minutes are there so to summarize up till now uh, language speech and language are different and we have primary areas and associate areas to interpret the basic noise or basic vision and with the association association areas we interpret or decode things and then there is a lot of connection between sensory and motor speech language areas vernicase and brocas and from the broca brocas there is a connection to the motor strip in the cerebral cortex which executes the function or delivers either in the form of writing where you require power to the right hand coordination or in the form of talking where a lot of muscles of articulation get into the picture so that is the uh, basic language function anatomy and function and there is a difference between uh, function of the primary cortex and association cortex like hearing is primary listening is association seeing is primary looking is a association so once we have understood uh, motor speech sensory speech dysarthria dysphasia and dysphonia we now go to the clinical part of it with this background so what is the clinical approach so before you start a clinical interview with the patient very important make sure the patient is able to hear an elderly gentleman has forgotten his hearing aid at home and you are asking questions where do you live what do you do how many children you have he is not answering so you think he is not able to understand so he has got a sensory aphasia please make sure that he really is able to hear and he is attentive also sometimes they just they have been dragged to the doctor they are not interested for consultation so they just refuse to answer as a protest for the family members having brought them so make sure the hearing and attention is there when you ask him to write make sure that he is literate enough to write if there are many people even today who don't know how to write who have never gone to the school though they may be very brightly employed and 
when you are giving questions to make him understand make sure that the language you are talking is the same as what he is understanding when you when i showed you the definition of language you said the structured language of that area for example you and me cannot understand the russian language so we say oh this is a foreign language i can't understand see the language is again a type of specific communication so make sure that now that in bangalore we have people from all over the country and abroad also especially bengalis assamese and all i don't know their language so i need an interpreter i ask a question and he says something the interpreter has to answer so make sure they hear they are able to write they are able to understand the language with which you are communicating and listen to the patient patiently request time see request time there are 10 patients are waiting outside your door and you are in a hurry to go home then you quickly will talk something and then go away and make a impression when you want to analyze neurology is 80% history diagnosis is 80% history 10% is physical exam 5% is routine investigation only 5% requires high tech investigations so to have that 80% information you need to listen to the patient patiently especially if the patient is not very cooperative for your examination you need to spend lot of time so the first step we have to identify is is it a peripheral problem delivery problem like dysarthria or is it a manufacturing defect that is a language center so once we make this distinction then we will move it further so i'll see now we come to the clinical approach so as i said make sure that the patient understand your language is cooperative to answer your questions and his vision and hearing is good now if you find the as i said first is make sure that it is dysarthria or dysphonia or the language problem dysphasia but if you find the patient as dysarthria as i said dysarthria means upper motor neuron lower motor neuron neuromuscular junction muscle cerebellum extra pyramidal all these acting on various muscles pharyngeal muscles palatal muscles tongue muscles and all that so how do we know dysarthria is due to what when there is a long list of uh, possibilities so follow the neurology principle tell me who your friend is i will tell you who you are if the patient has difficulty in talking and you find that tongue is wasted then you know it is a lower motor neuron problem maybe motor neuron disease or some other thing if you find the patient has a spastic tongue that means when you ask him to move the tongue like la 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 up and down sideways like that so you should be able to do quite fast if there is a spastic tongue then you find the tongue movements are very slow that may be the only sign which you will have to identify to say that okay the patient has difficulty in talking because of dysarthria as a result of a upper motor neuron lesion that means it is a type of motor neuron disease if the patient has associated cerebellar then you know obviously it is due to cerebellar speech if the patient has got parkinson's disease and very slow mumbling type low voice then you know that his difficulty in talking is because of rigidity of the muscles of articulation and of course dystonia and dyskinesia is a very obviously seen as abnormal movements so if the patient has difficulty to chew swallow facial weakness it could be a type of myopathy so in principle dysarthria can be easily diagnosed by associated other bodily symptoms of umn lmn or whatever it is so when you find the patient doesn't have any of these things and you think it is no dysphonia then we know that it is a language dysfunction i'll tell you about a case a professional singer referred as a motor neuron disease why because the patient has history of difficulty to talk let alone sing she was a singer actually she could not even talk properly one year duration there was a wasting of the tongue fibrillations could be seen clinically and emg showed fibrillation potentials and so they were referring doctor 
very correctly thought that he is dealing with a motor neuron disease and he gave a very bad prognosis and you know nowadays all our patients they consult first doctor google so when they went into google they said oh, uh, bulbar palsy patient has a short life span another 2 to 3 years and all that but then neurology is history when you go back to the history the difficulty in talking one year ago was an acute onset i had to repeatedly ask the previous day were you able to talk normally the next morning you woke up you could not talk so i had to make sure from the patient and the relatives it was an acute onset now obviously acute onset cannot be a degenerative disease like motor neuron disease and over a period of one year she was able to recover make she all patients they will say are you better now illa sir i am not better because for them better is 100% for neurologist from 0% to 30% there is an improvement once there is an improvement it is not motor neuron disease see those are all very important points so when you repeatedly say take the history they say oh, there is some amount of talking is there which was not possible at all but she is not able to talk properly so they are all expecting 100% and most important the patient had a unilateral wasting up so what is the diagnosis it is a right 12th nerve palsy with partial recovery what you would say it is a 12th nerve palsy one unilateral is two acute onset it is very similar to bell's palsy how a person gets seventh nerve palsy sixth nerve palsy third nerve palsy similarly rarely we get an acute 12th nerve palsy Two years later, when I met her, she had made a substantial recovery, though not sufficient to do the singing. So please remember, wasting and fasciculation does not mean anterior nerve disease. It can be a peripheral nerve disease, like in peripheral neuropathy. Cranial nerve is a peripheral nerve. Vocal cord dysfunction. I have already told you, spasmodic dysphonia of two types: adductor type and abductor type. So once you have ruled out. dysphonia which is obvious and ruled out dysarthria we are now going to analyze the dysphasia one more point to remember is the language centers and network is in the left hemisphere but a person who has a left cerebral infarction can also come with dysarthria need not be dysphasia because dysphasia happens at the language area cortical mantle and subcortical area when it is coming down towards the internal capsule the patient may not exhibit language dysfunction but because it the upper motor neuron fibers to the tongue is affected patient may have dysarthria so left hemisphere infarct does not equivalent to language dysfunction it can still be dysarthria so suppose a patient has a left infarction how do we make out the dysphasia i have already told you we have to look for the motor component and the sensory component the sensory component are two auditory and reading so is a common sense find out whether the patient is able to understand many times you find the patient is admitted to the ward patient is hemiplegia right hemiplegia so when you ask what is your name they may not able to understand lift your left hand they don't understand but make sure there is no relative standing there asking them to lift left hand then because of the seeing what they are doing they may mimic it they are not understood your voice so to make understand that your voice is understood auditory comprehension you should not give them any suggestion nor the relatives touch your right ear with the left index finger touch your nose lift your left hand put out your tongue so give some commands and see whether the patient is able to understand now he is not able to understand then we know that it is a auditory comprehension is affected now similarly the other sensory was a reading so same commands which you have said or something else may be written in a language which he can understand and show them follow this now if the patient is not able to follow in spite of a good attention that means the sensory speech area is affected both auditory and reading 
motor you are able to when you are talking to the patient what is your name did you have breakfast today where do you live how many children you have so usual questions you ask and see how they articulate do they answer or not at all or they are trying to only a few words come but not sentences see the fluency of the talk and see whether they can naming the commonest defect of language which we see in stroke patients is the naming anomia they know you give them a pen ask them what is this they won't tell what it is when you give them a suggestion is it for writing or is it for brushing then you say ah writing so they know the function but they don't know the name so naming is a very important part of the examination so the real objects you can show the pictures of uh, um, if the person is uh, more into politics you can show the political pictures or film or whatever or just simple things like apple or things like that and then ask him to write you can you can ask him to write saying write your address when you want to see whether he is able to copy then ask him to copy the three lines from the newspaper so these are the important things to do for a clinical examination of aphasia reception auditory and writing reading and expressive by talking and writing now important is the third part of the story is the repetition we will come to uh, there is a condition called the conduction of aphasia where the repetition is not there so you tell him repeat my words bangalore is the capital of karnataka he won't be able to repeat the same sentence now you ask him can you write down the capital of karnataka he will write he has understood and he is able to write the motor component is there then you will be wondering why is he not answering my question why is he not repeating what i am saying that is called a conduction aphasia the sensory is intact the motor is intact but the two are not talking to each other like the central government and state government they are not talking to each other so there is no communication between them each person each person is giving his own orders today you take this tomorrow you take this and this process the aircraft is uh, airplanes are starting the other person says airplanes will not come to bangalore so that sort of a dichotomy is there now this table gives you the <coughs> differentiation between dysphasia and dysarthria so mostly a repetition inability to talk inability to write is motor <coughs> sensory is inability to understand spoken and written words lesion is ear and usually there is an associated feature of right hand effects remember in clinical practice when a patient has a language problem and has a hemiparesis the diagnosis is very obvious the problem is to identify language defect without hemiparesis that is where the clinical skill now dysarthria is able to form all the sentences but pronunciation is skewed is able to write and understand spoken and written words so all these things can cause dysarthria and most of them have associated clinical features which is easy to make out where the lesion is for the dysarthria now within aphasias we have two important one is a motor or motor broca's area another is a wernicke sensory area globally is when <clears throat> all the three are affected and there is one thing called as a conduction aphasia now these four are very important very common sense says that in sensory aphasia the comprehension is impaired he cannot repeat because he is not able to understand what you are saying when comprehension is impaired obviously repetition is impaired naming is also impaired but fluency the motor part is acting so he is able to talk not only talk normally very fluently he talks the motor is intact <clears throat> in broca's area the motor is affected so there is a decreased motor output but comprehension is very good you ask him uh, is it what is this he doesn't tell name is not there but you give him the pen he is able to write properly repetition is impaired because even though the comprehension is there 
the output is not there naming is of course impaired in all these conditions the most important thing always is the naming conduction is very important comprehension is preserved and motor speech is preserved he talks normally he says this morning i got up i had a coffee and then i came to the hospital because i had some difficulty and comprehension you tell him what did you eat for breakfast he will tell you but repetition is affected you tell him repeat the word which i am saying bangalore is the capital of karnataka he won't tell so that is called as a conduction aphasia <coughs> so this is just to summarize a patient who is unable to talk properly non fluent that it is a motor cortex involvement that is the motor globe motor speech area is affected so under that if the patient is has got a poor repetition and poor comprehension that means comprehension is gone fluency is gone that it is a global aphasia comprehension is good is broca's these are all rarer varieties transcortical and all which i am not going into detail fluent aphasia where the person fluently talks but is not able to comprehend so that is a wernicke's aphasia comprehension is good conduction is bad now a case scenario patient woke up brushed his teeth sat near the dining table then said come yesterday the wife you said what is this nonsense you are talking how can i come yesterday that to do you want coffee he says no oh. so he takes the coffee and then she says then why don't you have bath come yesterday then she says something has gone wrong with this fellow so he has become a mental patient so the patient was brought to the casual mind you there was no hemiparesis there was no motor deficit so in casualty for every question what is your name where did you everything same word is repeated for any question you ask this is very classical of a broca's aphasia you have to identify this as broca's aphasia because the patient doesn't have hemiparesis if he has hemiparesis any difficulty in talking you say ah okay language dysfunction now here even mr brain is normal because the infarct is so small you will not be able to pick it up or it is too early for radiological evidence we have had patients with a dense hemiplegia with a normal mr scan when you repeat it after 12 hours there is an infarct clinical neurology clinical so when you see patient repeating the same sentence or same word for every type of question of an acute onset acute onset you know that this is a stroke in the language area that is in the motor part it is called as broca's aphasia so typically broca's aphasia the motor output is very small so we used to call it in our olden days as a telegraphic language uh, that means who is in the those days uh, we didn't have telephones uh, with everybody of course no mobile and all we used to have telegram each word telegram will cost something like 40 50 paisa or whatever those days so if you have passed an examination when i passed my mbbs exam so i sent a telegram to my father passed the exam so minimum words with full meaning that is called as a telegraphic speech nowadays telegraphic speech is by replaced by your uh, whatsapp messages you say asap for a long time i didn't know what is asap when i asked my resident doctor she said sir this is as soon as possible even people don't even write okay they just write k oh my god omg all these things i have learned now so this is also a telegraphic language minimum words but with full information that's what happens in broca's aphasia naming repetition is impaired comprehension is preserved and this is due to mca territory superior division that is the inferior frontal lobe so superior division now how do a patient of pure wernicke's aphasia present that is a pure broca's the 72 year old man woke up confused disoriented blabbering unintelligible words and he is getting angry because he is talking something which you cannot understand and he thinks that he is talking to you and you are not understanding 
so he gets wild he become angry he may become assaultive in that state the patient is brought to the casualty remember often times this is confused as a psychiatric patient so in the casualty you find that he is talking incessantly which you can't understand and when you are saying please sit down he doesn't understand show me your tongue doesn't understand and there is no hemiparesis so you refer to a psychiatrist so he may give you some serenades or quetapine like that without hemiparesis so that is important now this in acute onset of this is again is a wernicke's aphasia sensory gone so he is not able to understand but motor output is excellent blabbering so these two the brokers and wernicke's is the what you should understand as an isolated language disturbance presenting in an acute stroke well we used to say i don't understand a word what these young people are saying that means he has got a sensory aphasia he is not able to understand now here the, the cartoon which says this is called as a reading it is how people i knew it is it is how people uh oh, is a new software new software what is called as a brain nowadays we have stopped using our brain for even in 4 into 4 multiplied by 2 we look at the calculator so wernicke's aphasia to summarize uh, people consider it as an acute psychiatric disorder this is due to middle cerebral artery infarct global aphasia where there is a stem of the middle cerebral artery when it is blocked both the wernicke's is gone broca's is gone total global aphasia neither the patient comprehends nor is able to talk so that is an acute onset and so you make a proper diagnosis conduction aphasia as i told you this is good understanding is good talking is good writing is good but the repetition only is affected so when you ask him to repeat a word or a sentence this is where it is a block so what is called as a conduction aphasia just from the point of view of your examination gerstmann syndrome where there is an inferior parietal lobule in the left hemisphere with angular gyrus is affected a calculator dysgraphia and all that. i'm sure you can read it up properly there is one more important clinical point a 54 year old male uh, inability to type on a computer keyboard of one month duration detailed neurological examination normal mr cervical spine no conduction everything normal he is not able to key the board so with grip is good there is no rigidity he is able to do other activities brushing this now this is called as a apraxia an mr brain showed a infiltrative grade. apraxia is inability to do an activity in spite of everything available so like i see patients they are so depressed they are so anxious they said why are you depressed no doctor i have everything in life i have a good husband nice children money house car this thing then why are you i don't know doctor i still feel very sad i am afraid something may happen to me because everything is so normal so apraxia is inability to carry on an activity in spite of all neurological faculties are intact like it happens in day to day in spite of everything being there people are still unhappy it is apraxia alexia without agraphia again for your examination point of view lexus lexicon means reading uh, agraphia means uh, writing so alexia means unable to read even a simple sentence even though there is no hemianopia because primary cortex is good visual information but it does not reach the language network for interpretation the vision is good but interpretation is not there that's why it is called as alexia unable to read but they are able to write so it is again posterior cerebral artery territory because of the uh, occipital cortex primary area and associate area pure word deafness i don't think i'll go into the details because it is a superior temporal gyrus which receives the primary information about the sound so even the sound they are not able to hear that is a pure word deafness now this is the last uh, clinical side 
uh, this person I had seen when he was 45 year old. The story was that he has become very quiet. Earlier he was a great storyteller, you know. So he has stopped talking. Very sparingly he talks. Very few words he talks. And gradually it is becoming less and less. That was the only symptom. So naturally he was seen by ENT, neurologist, physician, MR brain, psychiatrist, why he is not talking. Maybe depression and all that. So when viewed, I also didn't know what it was. I only said at that time there is no primary neurological condition. Six months later, he had a typical Broca's dysphasia. Expression of writing has gone. Expression of talking has gone. Now, slowly it became a type of frontotemporal dementia. This is what happens in frontotemporal dementia. You see the frontal lobe atrophy, cross atrophy here. It is called as PPA, primary progress aphasia, progressive is itself is a type of dementia, very rare, just for your information. Now, how do you manage? A large number of language dysfunctions are due to stroke. So the management is due to stroke. It may be once in a way due to infection in temporal lobe or a tumor. So the underlying cause, what is important is speech therapy. Physiotherapy like hemiparesis, speech therapy is very important. And they definitely help a lot in recovering the speech. Please remember that. At home, the best speech therapist is a grandchild. Because the person who has a language dysfunction, especially the motor part, he is feels shy to talk to the adults or friends or relatives because they will know that this is disability. But with a grandchild who is not judgmental, all of us are judgmental. We judge, oh, he is good, he is bad, he did not. But children are not yet judgmental. So they are very free with the children. And so their vocabulary, their speech improves. So I usually tell the people who come from village, if you are in a joint family with large number of children, see that they mix up with grandchildren. They are a very good speech therapist. So the conclusion is stroke is a common neurological condition seen in clinical practice. This is associated with several types of language disorders, necessitating identification, prognosticate and appropriate management. Why did I use the word prognosticate? In speech therapy, in Wernicke's uh, aphasia, mm -hmm. the speech therapist, when he gives you instructions, you have to do this, you have to do that, is not able to understand because the, lang the speech language sensory area is gone. So the prognosis in Wernicke's aphasia is poor because they don't understand your instructions. Whereas if it is a motor speech, they understand your instruction, they follow what you are saying, the speech therapist is effective. So what type of language dysfunction tells us what is the prognosis and identification when not accompanied by hemiparesis, as I showed you two clinical cases, is most important. 